Welcome everyone to the Friday Contemplative Practice. I'm Jo Lynn and I'll be hosting the ses session today. Our team of presenters, members of the CCC community, offer contemplative practices every Friday at noon to help us pause from the activity of our week, to reflect more deeply within, to be nourished in spirit, and to join together in community. This week in our contem contemplative practice with Elizabeth River, she will share a poem and we will have time for contemplative writing or simply to sit and allow ourselves to be filled. Then we'll share our writing or reflections in the group. A bit about Elizabeth. She's an interfaith minister and has been a CCC member since 2003. And she loves this be beloved community. She loves to guide people on their spiritual quest as she herself is guided toward living into the answers to the big questions of life. A few logistical reminders, the practice will last about 30 minutes and then we'll open the room for sharing. You'll be able to unmute during the sharing time. The practice itself is being recorded and the sharing time will not be. And now I'd like to hand it over to Elizabeth. Thank you, <laughs> thanks, Jolene. Hold on a second, ah, okay. There we go. Okay, hi everybody. Good to be here today with our tiny group, small group within the big group. And um, well, I have to say about what um, I'm going to have today. It's a it's a reading taken from a um, an article, um, but and I don't have the date, but I think it was back in uh, the '90s, maybe, maybe more recent than that, but. At any rate, but I'm the reason I I brought it. I think this I've said this to you before. Most of the things that inspire me are things that I myself am um, most struggling with. And um, for me, uh, struggle during these times. It's not just aging necessarily, but it's uh, having lived long enough to see the cycles of um, not only, for instance, political cycles, but medical cycles. I mean, you know, we're the, for our, for us in our lifetimes, this is the first time we've experienced a pandemic or something that's of world magnitude and just other things, the changes in weather and um, all of the things that uh, are, are um, again, they're cyclical in the human condition, you know, over the, over the centuries humans come back again and again to these various things. So uh, it's it's not as if anything is a absolutely impossible surprise, but I, I sometimes struggle these days with uh, my resi resilience, which I used to take for granted. I, I was, um, in fact, I, I used to work um, as a hospice chaplain, I think you know, and um, there was a book about resilience. I don't, maybe that was the title of it, but at any rate, and it was, we, we all were kind of more or less read it as a group and talked about it in our team meetings. Um, and I, I, I guess it was for us, but I felt like it was helpful <laughs> as a chaplain with helping families and people, patients who were near the end of their life and so forth. But I, I now, I just feel, um, a lot of the time I feel um, I'm slow to be resilient, to kind of be able to take things on. I, I mean, I, I've, we all, I think, have learned a lot of resilience. Being in this community, this particular church and the kinds of pastoring we've had and the way, the kind of community we are, we've certainly learned a lot together um, about how to be in the world, how to be beings of love and connection and community, how to be healers, how to help heal, heal the world and so forth. But I've been struggling. So just out of my own self-interest, <laughs> I'm bringing back this particular quotation um, for us to look at. It's not very long. Um, it's not poetry, but it's, it's just a helpful piece. And what I especially like about it is that it, 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 um, it reminds me that, um, again, about that we're part of all of the cycles, cycles throughout, you know, the spirals. I heard somebody calling them spirals recently. 
your next time around with this particular situation, you're better or you're more, uh, you're wiser or better equipped than the previous times. So anyway, it's for the, the opening line. I'm, I'm just going to read it and Jolene's going to screen share it. But I will say the opening line is, do not lose heart. And that's what grabs me about this reading right off the bat is about, because sometimes I just, for a little bit, lose heart. <clears throat> so I'll read it and then Jolyn will read it. My friends, do not lose heart. We were made for these times. I have heard from so many recently who are deeply and properly bewildered. Ours is a time of almost daily astonishment and often righteous rage over the latest degradations of what matters most. You are right in your assessments. Yet I urge you, ask you, gentle you, to please not spend your spirit dry by bewailing these difficult times. Especially do not lose hope. Most particularly because the fact is we were made for these times. Yes, for years we have been learning, practicing, been in training for and just waiting to meet on this exact plane of engagement. Clara Pingola Estes. My friends, do not lose heart. We were made for these times. I'm, I've heard from so many recently who are deeply and properly bewildered. Ours is a time of almost daily astonishment and often righteous rage over the latest degradations of what matters most. You are right in your assessments. Yet I urge you, ask you, gentle you, to please not spend your spirit dry by bewailing these difficult times. Especially do not lose hope. Most particularly because the fact is that we were made for these times. Yes, for years we have been learning, practicing, been in training for, and just waiting to meet on this exact plane of engagement. I'm going to um, ring the bell and then we'll have some time to reflect and write if we wish. <laughs> 